That was my attempt at a different hello. Um, or just me amping myself up so that we have enough high energy for you on this Monday. Um, my friends, welcome, hello. I'm excited to be making some stitched fiber art with you today. Um, it's just gonna be me leading again, uh, and we're just gonna get started right away and do a little bit of stitching, a little bit of sewing, a little bit of kind of getting in the zone. And um, this is also pretty inspired by Victoria Viasana, who was on our Instagram Live like maybe a year, year and a half ago. So I will share her story, um, her um, discussion with us after this as well. It was a great Instagram Live. So you'll wanna check that out as well. So welcome, those of you that are joining us today. I'm Sarah Krajewski, your host for Instagram Live every Monday. Um, and just wanted to remind you, I do still have some of these fancy little stickers. Oh, hey, right here these little rainbow guys. So if you share anything about our live in your story after the fact, then I will pick somebody random to win a um, sticker and I will mail this right to you. So if you want one of these like super exclusive holographic stickers from Instagram Live uh, from joining us today on uh, today or any other day, you're gonna just need to share in your story, tag the art of it so that we can check it out. And then you can tag me today as well at Art Room Glitter Fairy. So. We're gonna get started so that I can see if I can get it like so perfectly timed like I did last time. The materials that you will need for making art with us today, there's just four. So I suggested a magazine um, page. I actually snagged these calendar photos. You could use a regular picture. You could use um, a like a magazine instead of something like a calendar. You could really even do it in like newspaper or anything that might be a little bit more um, structured. So you're gonna need some sort of image that you're going to sew onto. You're gonna need a needle and I'm gonna literally take it from my couch craft because I don't know if, if y'all have joined me before, you know I'm a big old proponent of couch crafts. So like always having something that you can make when you're sitting on the couch at the end of your day instead of scrolling the phone like what's you know are you drawing on your ipad are you sewing are you sketching do you have your sketchbook what are you doing that's your couch craft so this is my current couch craft i'm like making my own sunrise because i need a little more sun in my life so i'm gonna pull my needle from my um artwork i'm just using like a quick kind of like a uh I don't actually know, y'all probably know better than me what kinds of needles each of them are. Like some of them are denim needles and some are like blunt needles. This one's just got a little bit of sharpness to it, but I don't need it to be too crazy because I don't want it to be like really poking through my, my magazine. So it's not super structured. Okay, so I got my needle, got my magazine. Um, need a scissors for cutting your yarn. And then let me make sure I don't lose my needle. And then you'll need your yarn. Can I also just like humble brag for a second? My yarn, like look at how pretty, okay? Like organized by all its little colors. I'm just saying. And then I have like a big huge bin of all of the other um, refills. So give me some comments. What colors do you think I should use today? I think I'm gonna do, I'm kind of drawn to like this little hummingbird situation. Or wait, are those, yeah, those are hummingbirds. So I'm thinking I'm gonna do some embellishing on the hummingbird. So give me some ideas of what kinds of colors I should use or like maybe an image or something that I should add to it. I would love your opinions. Um, and then we're gonna get started sewing together. Okay, and again, to recap, those of you that just joined us, um, this type of like embroider embroidering onto or sewing onto um, imagery is definitely inspired by Victoria Viasana, and I will go ahead and share her Instagram live chat with us that we did about a year and a half ago, so you can check that out as well. But of course, embellishing or adding details to photography or magazines or collage has been something people have been inspired by for a long time, so I would love for you to take your ideas and run with them. So, okay, y'all didn't give me any suggestions. Just saying. <laughs> so I've got to decide myself. I'm gonna go like a little bit crazy with it. I always gravitate towards the neons. Like, this is gonna blind you. So we're just gonna essentially start sewing. What I would maybe suggest is take a little bit of time to do some head work. So um, I always like to to remind my students when we're doing sketching to think a little bit about your plan first. So you're making up your ideas in your head. This is your head work. And then you're going to be using your hands to do the actual creative process, your hand work. So what's your plan? And then how you're going to execute it. So I need to do a little head work before I just like go for it and then regret what I do. I'm thinking like, I kind of feel like I want a little bit of a, 
I don't know, I feel like they're looking at each other. There's this like special moment between these little birdies. So I might do like a little heart or a little explosion or something from this this piece. But let your um let your creation kind of speak to you a little bit. Um so you can make up your own inventive idea. So I'm gonna downturn my camera like so. So y'all can watch as I sew today. Um, to thread the needle, I always just give my students a little, or like myself, when I'm threading it, I, you know, this is a pretty big needle, and I always just remind them, like, get this little loop, burp, so we can kind of pinch, have a little bit more of a structured um, little part to push through the eye of the needle, and then just go ahead and, like, shove a roo and wish and hope and dream that your, your yarn will go through. Um, now, if you haven't seen that little trick of using a small piece of cardstock or a piece of paper, kind of like fold a little rectangle of paper into a, like a hot dog bun, stick the string that you're trying to put through the eye of the needle into the hot dog bun like a hot dog, and then just push the whole thing with the paper and the yarn through the eye of the needle, and that's a really good trick to help kids um, thread their needles when they're having a little bit of trouble, okay? All right, so um, because we're gonna embellish today and we're just using any type of image to start with, I'm gonna just tie in a little knot on the back just to make sure I'm not pulling my yarn through. I'm keeping it kind of easy peasy, all right? And then we're gonna get started. So again, you could sketch, like I'm gonna do, I think I wanna do, I mean, it feels kind of like simple to do a heart here, but I'm just, I'm gonna just go for it. I'm just gonna follow my heart a little bit. Um, or <laughs> follow my heart to make my heart, y'all. I can't even. Um, so I'm gonna just start sketching it a little bit in in my brain since I don't have my pencils up here. And we're just going to just punch through the back. Now, what I've noticed, cause I have actually done this, so I'm gonna just like poke through. This kind of calendar paper is a little bit flimsy, so I need to be kind of mindful, but it is gonna eventually like open up that hole a little bit so I can pull a little bit more, okay? So I'm gonna try to like stitch and talk at the same time. I'm gonna just get my heart outline on here and I'm gonna do more of a kind of like a running stitch or actually a back stitch. So I'll make a dash. I'm gonna go further ahead and then come back to my stitch. Um, but you can sketch this out a little bit too. So if you wanted a plan with a little bit of a, like maybe a pencil or a Sharpie and kind of plan your design, you could start with a drawing first and go from there. Now, this is honestly kind of a big piece of paper. So something that I noticed, because I have done embellished photos with my students before, and they definitely got a little bit of this like torn paper situation happening, and that was really frustrating for them. So my suggestion is, and yes, it was not on the supply list for this week, but if you're finding that that's happening with your picture or your magazine, just put a little bit of masking tape on the back and that's gonna help make your um, surface a little bit more structured. So again, for the running stitch, I'm going, correct me if I'm wrong, y'all, I think this one's, or no, the back stitch, sorry. Um, I'm going to find where I would like my next place to be. So I'm like coming here, if you can see my little needle, boop, there she is. Okay, then I'm gonna pull up all the way till it's tight. And then I'm gonna come back to my stitch. So my back stitch, hello. And that's what gets it that nice like solid outline. So I'm not really gonna sketch today cause I'm, you know how I do this. I'm just kind of like go willy nilly. <laughs> my brain, my brain can't handle it. All right, so we're gonna just keep, keep going a little bit and embellish. Something else that's kind of fun when you do um, a piece of artwork on a, something that already exists, like a collage from a magazine, or in this case, embellishing from a calendar page, is actually going right on top of the subject. So right now I'm really working in the background and I'm trying to fill my space just to help give it a little bit more interest in this background. But something that could be really fun is just actually adding details and maybe adding this kind of softness to my actual birds or to my actual subjects. So that's something you might wanna consider if it is related to what you're creating. Okay, so I'm gonna do my little back stitch. And then I also wanna show y'all one of my favorite stitches, my beloved French knot. I love it so much. So let me finish up my heart and then we'll go from there. 
And actually, I'll show you how to do the um, masking tape on the back as well because that might be just a good tip if you're feeling like your page is pulling. Like even this ma this um, calendar is a little bit thicker than maybe a um, magazine page would be. So if you are feeling like you're a little bit overwhelmed with how fragile it is, a couple things that are gonna help is going to be cutting your piece down smaller because then you're not like pulling on all of this surface area. So like doing a smaller piece, it's gonna help it stay structured. You could back it onto another paper, so like glue stick it to another one, or in this case, um, a little bit of masking tape. So I'm gonna just try this. I've got this like big old chunky masking tape, and I'm gonna just stitch it or attach it here, because I know that's gonna be help helpful. You could also try laminating, but the again with laminating, I feel like that's those school laminators do a, an amazing job. Um, like doing their job but then they make that really kind of thick coating so it might be a little trickier if you are wanting to stitch through to actually do um do it through lamination you might need a sharper needle okay so that was like magical i'm just going through this masking tape there's no tearing on the front it feels a little bit more structured so if you're gonna do this like i can pull and i i feel like there's less chance of it um like pulling us pulling a piece through my, um, through the front a little bit. Okay, someone go back in here. Come on, Fran. This is always like the, the fun little game is trying to find your needle from the front. Like, where are you gonna come out? <laughs> All right, I'm actually gonna do two more little stitches here. And then I'm gonna show y'all some, some French knots because that's my favorite way to embellish. And I feel like this could be something you could teach to your students too, if you wanted to have them um, create something that was a little bit more, um, you know, a little bit more dimensional. Look at this wonky little heart, this cute little heart. Actually, I'm gonna do a couple stripes now that I have my pink attached. Okay, so we're gonna go straight across. So again, you're just stitching through paper. There's something just a little bit satisfying about practicing stitching, practicing sewing. Like I, I don't know about y'all, but a little bit of stitching is like the perfect mindless task for me. Um, my husband just recently started doing cross stitching and that's been really good for like getting off the phone, doing something that's like a little bit therapeutic, a little bit more in the zone and creative, but not having to, um, you know, think so hard about making like an artistic decision when you just kind of want to do your thing. Right. And again, as I was showing y'all, this is my little couch craft that I'm embroidering, embroidering, is that a word? Stitching? Um, so that's, that's helpful too, to have something that's kind of just something you can pick up and continue working on. Okay. I wonder if you could poke the holes first and then sew them. Yes. So I'm thinking, um, you definitely could for the paper though. It is pretty, pretty flimsy. So I think if you poke too many holes, you know how like when you hole punch things and you've got just a little tiny millimeter in between each hole punch, like if kids are sewing it or if there's something where there's like just a little bit of paper, sometimes those holes sort of combine into one larger hole. And I would be nervous that that would happen with this as well. You could try like maybe doing some Sharpie marks to mark out where you would want the designs to be. And then, um, and then follow along with those lines. So certainly if you were gonna do this with a class, you would probably do a little bit more planning or preparation. But um, as a friendly reminder, our Monday um, chats are a time for us to be creative ourselves as our educators and as creative people, but also hopefully some things that you might be able to bring back to your classroom as well, or at least just ignite that creative spark. Um, and then I also saw a friend here saying, what grade level do you recommend for this lesson? So I did do an embellished photo or a calendar photo lesson um, with fourth graders. So I'm just stitching my little tail on the back here just so I can switch my color. Um, and I thought that was really successful. I think, you know, anytime you do a fiber lesson, you're going to find kids that are just amazing at it and they love it. And they've, you know, maybe they've sewn before. And you're gonna find some kids that can't get their needle, you know, to have their yarn on it. And it's just gonna be frustrating for them. And that's the part of the process that, that you kind of need to work through a little bit and see what's gonna work for you. So I would say fourth grade will probably work pretty well. That heart is, has got a mind of its own. So I'm gonna show y'all another stitch. I'm gonna put my neon pink away and get a different one. Let's do, 
Should we do a little orange? This feels right. Just want to keep it bright today. Okay. So we'll do a little French knot and get some little dots on the front. Um, you can also just essentially use this yarn. It's kind of like you're painting with yarn or drawing with yarn. So you're trying to, to find an image in your head or look, be inspired by what you see on your um, chosen image and then really just embellish that and kind of go to town. So I'm gonna tie it my back here and then we're gonna go on the front. And I think I'm gonna do, maybe I'll do like a, um, just some random French knots behind my heart. So a French knot is essentially going to give you a dot of yarn on the front. So you'll poke through the back. And this one I'm going through my masking tape. So that's really helpful just to make sure I'm not pulling a whole bunch of my um, calendar paper with me and really tearing it like crazy. And I'm gonna pull through to my knot. And then to make a French knot, you're gonna hold the little tip or the little end right here. Let me see if I can get a little closer for y'all. Zoom in. Okay, and we're gonna take our little needle and this is now gonna become our holder tool. So I'm gonna take my needle, wrap it around my tail one, two times, go back in close to where I was. I can't go through the same hole or the whole thing's gonna come out, but I'm gonna go back close to where I was, push through. See so I'm still holding that tail. And then I'm gonna pull, 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 pull. It makes a little dot on the top because it kind of like locks in those little loops that I made. I'll do it again for you. Okay, through the back, ka -chow. Pull to the end. Hold your little tail. You're gonna take your tail in one hand. So this is your helper hand holding. Your needle wraps around your tail. One, two, and then stick that needle back through close to where you were. Okay, so again, how I'm still holding with my helper hand so I don't lose where my little my little loop is. I'm gonna pull, pull, keep it kind of pulled tight. Boop. So cute. Now, I've never taught French knots to students, not gonna lie, but I use them a lot in my own embroidery, so I just kind of like love doing them. I feel like they're a really cool way to get texture. So if you wanted to add a little more oomph to your embroidery, you are welcome to. So I'm gonna just keep you close here for a little bit while I add a few more. And if you all wanna try any other, I mean, you can make up stitches. You can, like, there's no wrong way to do this. You're just gonna look at your artwork, be inspired by what you see, and then go to town. It's the best. Um, I've also wanted to do some embroidery of like portraits too. Again, that one is like very um, reminiscent of Victoria's artwork as well. So you might be inspired to do like a portrait lesson that might be embroidered uh, with your classes or on your own. So don't be afraid to just like take on a little bit of some stitching and some sewing. Okay, I'm gonna finish the edges here too. And just do a couple more of my little French knots and then I'll add some more to my heart. I'll admit y'all, stitching does take a little bit longer than you think. Like I'm always, I have an idea in my head and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna work on this embroidery. It'll take me like, I don't know, like a couple hours or like it's just whatever. But then you realize you've been sewing something for 25 hours, you know full amount of time so be pr that's why it's a good couch craft it's because it's always gonna be there <laughs> you never finish no okay so I'm gonna get my little last last heart in there One, pull um and speaking of Victoria's artwork she actually leaves some of the tails exposed on the front of her artwork um which from our chat I believe was kind of symbolic of like an unfinished story. So the tails kind of hanging off of her artwork really were more of an inspiration of like, things are never quite finished. They're never quite ended or over. So um, that's kind of a cool symbolic uh, uh, art artist choice as well, which I really love. All right, so I'm gonna just sew this little guy in the back. And I think I'm gonna just do one more color and then I wanna see what y'all are working on. So I'm just kind of like, this is never pretty. I don't know if y'all have like cute backs to your, like look at this, this is insane. I mean, I kind of love it. I partly feel like I just want to display it this way, but I'm just saying, it's not gonna be pretty back there. Okay, 
me check to make sure I didn't miss anybody. All right, so we've got about a couple minutes left. We're gonna just finish up with a little bit more embellishment on the front. I think maybe I'll, should, like, should I, should I sew on the bird? I don't know. Y'all, I need your opinions. Can't make these decisions myself. I mean, I can, but I don't want to. <laughs> Let's do a little bit of red. Keeping my colors bright today. All right, so again, thank you for joining me. This Monday is always just a really nice time to just make something and knowing, I mean, I'm here every Monday, so I'm doing it. But it's nice to know like, okay, I don't have time to make something for myself. I don't know what I'm working on. But just come join us and just create for 30 minutes. That's all you need. And it'll just spark that little love of art in your brain, give you a little reminder of what you're doing and why you're why you're doing it, and hopefully be be a little bit of oh yes, you guys are giving me suggestions. Okay, thank you. Raise up from the bird's head. Yes! Wrap the branch with green. Yes. Blue feather contour. Okay, now that I got red on my Okay, I'm gonna take it off. <laughs> okay, let's do some green on the branch. How about like, is that too close? Here, we'll do this one. Cool. Yes, so again, this time on Mondays is hopefully just a time for you to know this always happens. I can come and pop in, make some art. Hopefully you'll have some of the basic-ish materials that we use typically. And you can, you know, join us and cultivate that creative spirit. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little bit of green. Let me check to make sure, okay. So a little bit of green here. And you know, the nice thing too about stitching through paper is I feel like sometimes if I'm doing an actual embroidery on um, like a canvas or, you know, embroidery backing, I don't wanna have my strings be too long but you kind of can for this. Like I don't want them to go like super far across because then you have all that open space. You kind of want to tack it down. But with yarn, as long as you're not pulling it super tight, you can just create however long of patterns you would like to. I'm gonna give it like a little shine on my, on my bamboo. <gasps> and of course I picked like such a big picture y'all because this is gonna drive me insane that this is like just barely embellished, but Sometimes we don't finish the project and that's okay. It just gets us started and think like, ooh, this is something I've never tried before. I like it, It's I wanna keep going. Or like, okay, that was fun, let's move on. Something different. Okay, so I'm gonna do some like longer pieces. Yes, my little bamboo. And I've had a bunch of y'all hanging out with me today. And if you're just watching, totally awesome. You're obviously welcome to just hang out and check out what we're doing. But if you made something, I would love to see what you created. Or even if you're just in the brainstorming phase, go ahead and tag us at the Art of Ed. Tag me at Art Room Glitter Fairy so I can check out what you want, what you're working on. And like I said, I will also share our chat with Victoria Viasana. Um, inspiration for this artwork after the fact so you can check out our conversation that her and I had a few sessions ago it was amazing her artwork is so cool if you've never seen it it's awesome okay like linear oh 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 but what am I doing I'm doing like dashes y'all I don't know I don't know about you but on Mondays my brain is just kind of like half here maybe 10 percent here so when you suggested green lines, I'm like, yep, sounds good. <laughs> I feel like I just want like little shines. You know, like I kind of want this illusion that it's, I don't know, kind of like it. That'll work. Also appreciate your resourceful music. <laughs> yes, calendar pics. I have a whole stack of them in my art room. We use them sometimes for animal reference pictures, but also they're kind of fun to, um, to just like have because kids really love the high quality photos and they're like great for a project like this. The other thing that I was thinking about was, I don't know if this happens to you at your school, but today in the teacher's lounge, I saw a whole cart of books that said free books from the library. We're like, you know, clearing out our shelves. I, this like happens all the time. 
And so if you see books that maybe aren't the kind of books you would want in your little classroom library or to gift to a family or something, maybe try pulling apart the pages of like a beautifully illustrated book and kids could embellish on the books. Maybe even like each student has a page and it becomes this whole story. I don't know. I just saw that today and I was super psyched about that potential. So y'all, I think we're like a couple minutes early, but I just want to like give you just a little, just a little moment to observe and enjoy. I got to stick my needle back or I definitely will lose it. Okay. Tuck this guy in. So I could, I could for sure continue embellishing on, on this for a while, but Hopefully you're at least a little bit inspired to think like, okay, do I have to start from a blank page? Do I have to start from a blank embroidery hoop? No, you can just be inspired by something you see, some imagery that you love, and then tell a story through how you're adding your details to it and really trying to like fill, fill the space a little bit too. Book pages would be fun. Ooh, yes, to watercolor also. Yeah, just especially like, you know, if it's not glossy paper or something that's like a really nice textured paper. Like, I don't know about you, but when I pick up a children's book that is such high quality, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna, even if like this, the story isn't like what I would maybe use in my classroom, I'm like, I'm gonna take these papers and I'm gonna like use them for collage or something. Just saying. So that could be really fun too. So thank you all so, so much for joining me. Embellished photos, really fun, really cool way to just work on a little bit of texture and sewing. And I'll be saving this in our Instagram story after this or our IGTV tab so you guys can check it out later if you would like to watch it at a different time. But if you made anything with us, tag us at The Art of Ed, tag me at Art Room Glitter Fairy so I can check it out and check out our chat with Victoria Biasana from a little while ago. We will see y'all next Monday for some more art making and have a great rest of the week. Toodaloo! Goodbye!